It's a nice conference. It's good. You know, uh, there's a couple of takeaways for me today. Uh, one of those was from Larry Peterson earlier. I hadn't uh, seen Larry speak before, but you know, um, I had my, I've had my noodle tickled at least once today, which is nice. Larry had talked about um, what the, the disruptor's dilemma. And if I can butcher it, it was something around, um, on one hand, you can take, you know, do disaggregation as a, uh, as a path to innovation. On the other hand, you can uh, do what integration to facilitate adoption. And I think I'm butchering it, but uh, it's the adoption bit that I wanted to focus on right now and talk to you guys a little bit about. Um, this last year, uh, yeah, I gave a few different um, service mesh workshops. Um, so I ended up speaking to a lot of people who are currently adopting or considering adopting. And there were lots of questions asked, um, but two that were consistently asked and maybe have bugged me and, and some other members in the community enough to go do something about it. Um, one of those was, was this. It was, well, it sort of started off with, wow, this is fantastic. I see the value of the service mesh. These are awesome, right? Because, you know, what else, would they, what else would they be saying when I was done with the workshop, right? So, um, and then they, uh, and then they said, you know, hey, where do I get started? Which one, what do you recommend? There's a couple out there, you know, you know there's various ways to deploy them. You know, what, what, do you, what do you think? I'll leave you, I'll leave that cliffhanger there. I won't, uh, I won't say. Uh, the other one, though, was um, also asked every time. And you could kind of see the gears turning in the engineer's mind. And it was something like, wait a second. That's not for free. There's what's the, uh, what's the how much latency are we talking about here? What's the CPU that's going to burn based on all this value I'm getting for free with no code change? Which is always, there's that little asterisk by that no code change thing. Um, which is, you know, mostly true. And so, um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, we, we should collectively help you know, help people answer some of these questions. I think that people need a playground to go and um, easily spin up a service mesh, you know, uh, you know which, whichever one of those that it might be. Uh, play with it, get, gain some familiarity with its functionality, have a sandbox. Um, I think that also, you know, it's, it's incumbent upon us to provide some, answer that other question about overhead and what that looks like. And it's not really a fun question to answer because if anyone does performance engineering in here, there's just a lot of variables. It's always, well, it depends. And it's, uh, anyway, I didn't, didn't realize the, what we were quite stepping into when um, we set out to build this tool here. And I want to introduce that tool to you today. Uh, Meshery, it's a multi-mesh uh, performance benchmark and playground, an open source tool um, that there's a small collection of, of folks who've spent some of their extra cycles to come and, come and um, do what's hopefully a public service, um, like all open source is, right? It's just a, <laughs> all right. Well, we're getting like, I'm not sure if there's like sarcasm floating around in here what the laughs are about. Um, but speaking of, I think Chris had talked about what container wars. Um, I have to say, I was much more focused and centered on the container orchestrator wars that was another uh, topic that I went around talking a lot about. I did a fair bit of analysis on really uh, comparing and contrasting kind of the four most prominent at the time container orchestrators, Mesos and Marathon, Kubernetes, Swarm, Nomad, and felt like I was doing a very structured kind of um, fair comparison. One of those categories that we compared on was this was scale. It was like high availability scale, and, and the way that the container orchestrators kind of measured themselves on their, their scale was around the scheduler. And it was something around you know, how, how many containers, um, how many nodes, uh, how quickly, you know, how quickly can you schedule those and get them up. Each of the container orchestrators, each, each of those projects, uh, you know, had some, some of them had prettier visualizations for this than others, but all of them had some pretty impressive stats that they threw up, um, which was fantastic. Although for my part, it was like almost done in a vacuum. 
uh, without really a frame of reference. Um, and certainly sort of apples to oranges ac across them, not really an apples to apples comparison. Um, so those are part of the things that we're hoping to address within um, a tool like this, to the extent that you can get to an apples to apples comparison. I don't, I don't know that that's, um, it's a hard, hard thing to achieve, but hopefully um, this is about a two month old uh, project. So, uh, so no doubt there are some bugs in there. Has anyone, have we done a live demo yet today? Oh, okay. Oh, shit. All right. There goes my. Okay. Well, thanks for that. Uh, I'm too late. We're gonna, I'm going to see if I can't uh, demo this, but it's just a you know, simple tool. Um, you can deploy it locally. You can deploy it in your cluster. Um, you can deploy it on the mesh if you want to, although to the extent that you're trying to do some performance analysis, probably don't deploy it on your mesh. But uh, rather point it at either your sample app or, or your application. Uh, it'll generate some load, um, receive that back, and present it to you. Hopefully, this is a tool that empowers the Joe Schmo operator or the Joe, Joe Schmo engineer who's kind of going through this question about adoption and even, even after they have, it'll persist the results and you can come back release after release and kind of check on whether or not things are getting improving or getting worse. And for those that looked at the Istio 1.1 release, things improved in and around performance. So that working group is doing a, a great job. Uh, let me see if I can show you what this looks like. And it looks like I'm going to drive from up here. So, so the tool itself, um, there's a couple of containers, as you've seen. It's set up to be um, multi-orchestrator. So it's maybe not well shown here, but uh, you, you'll deploy Meshery, the tool itself. It'll connect to, um, hopefully, any number of adapters. We'll talk about the state of some of these adapters. I'm going to show you the Istio adapter right now, but just a, a little adapter to communicate with the service mesh um, that go over, uh, spin it up. Uh, so we're just using Docker Compose here. We've got um, you know, the, the, the two meshery and then an Istio adapter. Um, if we go over it, so this is running on my local machine. Right now I'm, I'm VPNed back into, uh, back into the office and uh, I'm going to point at a Kubernetes uh, small Kubernetes, I think a small Kubernetes cluster running the Istio kind of canonical sample app book info. Um, but first, we'll bring up uh, Meshery itself. So again, just running here on localhost. We end up um, signing in, and uh, configuring the tool quickly. So to configure it, we'll go over and choose our cube config in this case. And, and then we'll point uh, the tool Meshery to the adapter that's in the environment. So this is the Meshery Istio adapter, just again running locally on, on this laptop. Uh, and we can go over and um, it'll also, it, to the extent that since it wants to show you back information about your environment and performance statistics, you can connect it to a Grafana if uh, you've deployed Grafana as part of your Istio deployment. So you can go ahead and, and, and we are, that this one is uh, running Grafana. So it connects to Grafana. You can go ahead and maybe pull in um, some of, if you've invested into some dashboards there, pull those in. Um, maybe manipulate which uh, specific uh, metrics you're, you're wanting to display here. But it'd be nice to have those metrics about your environment and your nodes and the resources that are being consumed there um, as you go to generate your load test. So, so let's go over and um, uh, uh, briefly uh, just stop within the playground, which really is an underformed playground, but I wanted to highlight it just because we've had a, a contribution here around um, Istio Vet. So the Aspen Mesh folks have been kind enough to let us incorporate Istio Vet as a library to help uh, confirm whether or not your, uh, your config is, uh, that you've got good config in your environment. And so we, we went ahead and, and ran Istio Vet, came back with a number of notifications saying, looks like you're each of these vetters each has run well, so this one hasn't. And it'll tell you, again, just kind of let you play, play around with the mesh and, and see what's there. But, but um, to the extent that you want to do a performance test, in this case, let's point to the book info app, your product page. And um, on the inside here, we're leveraging Ford.io as a load generator within the tool. And so those that are familiar with the Istio project might be familiar with that particular tool. Um, you can come in and, and uh, you know, configure, configure a test. Kind of run your test in this case, what we're doing, uh, you know, 
essentially running you know, one request a second for about a minute here. As that runs, we can entertain ourselves with our uh, Grafana dashboards that we can see here. We should probably see a pickup on um, some of the overhead that we might expect around, and, and we are, some overhead we might expect around the telemetry that Mixer is having to deal with as that load is as generated on the sample app. Um, and then if I tell a joke for 30 more seconds. <laughs> All right, hey, that was good. That was, I didn't even have to tell a joke. That's great. Yeah. It's, uh, um, but our hope is, is that, um, is that while you know, right now this isn't the most um, complex tool, and there's many nerd knobs to tweak and configure about how you want to uh, run a performance test, uh, but that um, th this hopefully helps people self-answer some of those questions around performance and what the, what the cost is, um, either having them do it on their own app, against their own app, on or off the mesh. Um, and so in this case, we just, we were displaying the results back. We can see um, where the, the median, the mean, and kind of the average response time uh, comes back. So, so this is measuring latency, and it's measuring throughput. Um, which is kind of nice, and so to the extent that you do that over time, this will just you know, persist your, re your results. You can come in and look at them, or you can come in and maybe compare them as so, or if you've got, boy, it's, it's fun, fun giving a demo, or if you've got a few of them, that's not, that's not very pretty, but if you've got a few of them, uh, maybe you know, compare those results and kind of compare them over time. Someone needs to do something about this label, but 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 more or less, we're just we're leveraging some open source software that's out there to help um, help empower people. And so, um, with that, uh, I'm, we're not I'm not here today to say, hey, so we run this against all of the other uh, meshes and kind of here's how they compare. That's the goal. Um, this particular tool is on. Uh, on the schedule for these next three upcoming conferences. So stay tuned. Uh, there will be some results. My hope is that generally all of the results are pretty good. Uh, we might see that some meshes uh, perform better than others in certain environments or under certain, against certain types of workloads or uh, that, but hopefully this bolsters and in, you know, inspires confidence in people to go ahead and, and understand what's happening in their mesh, understand the, the price that they're paying for that convenience. Something to come out of this is then um, potentially something of a, a service mesh uh, benchmark spec. So to the extent that we, you know, you're gathering up the result that, you, that we were just seeing visualized, that certainly you can store that, but, but you need to know, and this was back to sort of the it, it depends about performance engineering. So you store the result, but you also need to store, well, hey, what was the environment that we were using? How many nodes did we have? How big were those nodes? What was the app we were using? What version of my app was it hitting? Uh, what version of the, what service mesh, what version of that mesh, how was it configured? There's lots of, Istio is very powerful, lots of things to configure and, and tweak. And so uh, part of that, we're hoping to collaborate with the, um, uh, the community here, each of the project, the prominent projects. Um, the ones that I just had listed uh, here, all except for the one in italics, um, have committed to contributing and are. Um, and so no pressure, Tony, Nick, if you're out there, no, no, no pressure. Um, but I do want to thank um, these contributors. As a matter of fact, Vanil, who is just up here, uh, has contributed some, so I want to embarrass him if he's, yeah, very good. All right, he's embarrassed. Good. Um, lastly, I'm going to embarrass another a fellow ginger over here. I don't know if you know this guy, but this guy's uh, halfway through writing a, a the, you know, one of probably what are only two potential Istio books out there. And so if you guys are looking for a source of authority, look for Red Beard. You generally, <laughs> all right. When one of us is more distinguished than the other, uh, just to, just to but, um, but go ahead and, and subscribe there and you'll, you'll be sure to be notified. So, so with that, uh, I want to invite Zach back up. And, yeah, thank you. Anyway. Alrighty, uh, yeah, we're good. Oh, there we go. Hey, all right, now we've made it. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Lee. Uh, so I want to thank all of y'all for coming. Uh, so first off, just uh, how was it? Good, bad, good, yeah. All right, awesome. Uh, so I do. I want to thank 
uh, all of our, our sponsors that actually made this possible, right? Uh, GCP, uh, Juniper, Capital One, uh, Pivotal, uh, AWS, sorry, I have to sneak a glance at my, at my signs as I go down the list. Uh, the CNCF, the ONF, and uh, the OpenStack Foundation as well. Thank you all so much for making all this possible. Uh, it really is, it's really cool. Uh, it's pretty special for me to see, uh, you know, being one of the early engineers uh, working on service mesh, it's pretty cool for me to see something like this. It really is very special. Uh, I also want to take some time out. Uh, Shriram, Chris, Tweeney, come up here. Come on, come, come. Uh, these are our conference organizers. Come, no, on the stage, let's go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna one-up Lee on the embarrassment front, right? We're gonna... Uh, but these are the people that have done so, so, so much work uh, to make this whole thing happen. Uh, and, and we need to thank them for, for the awesome conference that they put on. Really, thank you. It's been awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all have done such a good job.